Carbon, the building block of life, consists of six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. Quite a simple little atom, you might say, yet carbon is a nonmetal that can bond with itself and many other chemical elements, forming nearly 10 million compounds. One of these compounds, CO2, is what's known as a greenhouse gas and is partially responsible for global warming rates. CO2 emissions have been consistently on the rise for most of mankind, and coupled with our explosive population rates, it presents an incredible problem. CO2 emissions are linked to an increase in natural disasters, rising ocean rates, disease, famine, and countless other life-threatening problems. This picture shows an equation derived in a TED Talk by Bill Gates. The equation is simple. Carbon emissions equals people times services used per person times energy per service times carbon produced by unit energy. Obviously, people and the services they use won't be going to zero anytime soon if we want to drive our race forward. And although energy use per service is improving, it will never truly be zero. So one of these has to go to zero. Carbon produced per unit energy, however, is something that we not only can, but must work on. There are many solutions available right now, but they're all primarily in their infancy. Nuclear, wind, solar, and carbon capture on existing plants are, in my opinion, the best alternatives, although carbon capture is more of a band-aid. Um, but generally, these present a problem as they're neither efficient nor footprint conscious. A general energy farm is about on the scale of 100 times larger than a coal plant. The problem with this is it's not cost effective enough to compete on current energy markets, something that will have to change if we truly want to become a carbon free society. The biggest issue faced in green, however, is battery technology. A rather concerning statistic I uncovered is that if we take the entire world's supply of batteries, it would be only able to sustain about 10 minutes of peak power. Because of the cyclic nature of a lot of these green energies like solar and wind, this issue needs to be addressed. Battery technology is currently only being developed by a handful of companies for specialized applications such as phones and mobile devices. We need to invest broader if we want to address our energy needs. For a hydrocarbon free society, we need ways to sustain power at peak times when sun and wind are not fully operating. And batteries as such will be a very important part, if not more important, than the actual energy capture itself. The main point, however, that I'm trying to make in this TED talk is that beyond the issues we face as a society with energy, we can use these problems to regain our hold on the top of the world fiscally. Generally, technologies in North America grow at a rate proportional to their economic potential. And although I don't like to admit it, I don't think any amount of begging on the part of climate scientists is going to change this. Right now, there is a concern between the growth of other countries and the potential of North America, and that we will no longer be a superpower in the world. I see green energy as an avenue to extend our growth economically and keep our spots on the top of the world. I don't think these two things are mutually exclusive. I think green energy and economic growth can be one and the same. For a truly green planet, we need more engineering, manufacturing, and skilled labor forces, the likes of which, historically, only North America can provide. By focusing on lean, efficient, high-quality products, we can once again be seen as the hub of human progress. It will, however, take the combined efforts of policymakers, industry, and scientists to make this come true. Already, big companies like General Electric, Apple, and Google are seeing energy as a way to our future and the herald of a new age, brought along by something that only North America can achieve. As engineers, I think it's our responsibility to drive forward growth for the world as opposed to a monetary end. Perhaps that's why the mottos of these three big engineering companies are imagination at work, think different, and do no evil. And it's about time that we start doing that again. Thank you.